Hello everybody, it's great to see you back here on the channel in 2025. So happy new year to each and every one of you. And I've been having a bit of a rest. I mean, I don't cope well with these hot Australian summers, so I do go into a bit of hibernation, but I haven't been doing nothing. In fact, I'm here today to delve a little bit further into the intricacies and details of the Move Shoot Move Nomad Star Tracker. And in fact, Move, Shoot, Move are a really interesting company. You know, they take notice of what people suggest and they have actually contacted me after last year I produced a video talking about some perhaps modifications that I did to my MSM Nomad Star Tracker. More to do with the actual mounting of the phone holder and polar alignment here in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, most of you would know here in Australia and in other places around the world, lasers are banned, can't use them at all. Uh, the other thing is laser wouldn't be any good here anyway because we can't even see the, the South Celestial Pole. There's no pole star, no Polaris like you guys in the North have. So we need other methods. Now, typically what I do is use a phone mount and a phone to do polar alignment. Now that works really well for me up to about 50 mil. In fact, I've tested 85 millimeter lenses and I'm getting pretty good results with that focal length. But when I'm using my wide angles, you know, 20, 24 up to 35 millimeters, there's no problem at all. But I think it's important to make note that once you set this thing up to be a user friendly device, it takes a lot of the guesswork and a lot of the pain of actually setting up and doing that initial polar alignment out of the equation. And so anyway, what Move, Shoot, Move did, they contacted me and asked me about a suggestion they had to make a Southern Hemisphere astrophotography kit inspired by what I'm doing here. So uh, anyway, this is what I'm going to show you. This is the kit. And you can see here, I've got my Move, Shoot, Move tracker. It's on the Move, Shoot, Move wedge base. Uh, we've got the Allen Wallace V plate, and I've got a, a little low profile ball head on the top. Uh, the other thing that they supply in that kit is this new modified phone mount. And this is great. I really like this much better than the original model that they were shipping with the Move, Shoot, Move trackers for quite a few years now. So anyway, I'm gonna go through some of the things that they've changed and perhaps compare with what they used to have. Now the tracker itself, the Move, Shoot, Move Nomad, I've been using this now for the best part of a year since it came out really, and it has never once let me down. It is a really good tracker. It's small, lightweight, easy to use. It's got one switch on, off, Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere, that is it. And I like that. Simplicity is always key. Now, one of the things that I love about trackers of any brand is how easy are they to set up? How easy are they to get going? And, and how portable are they? How easy are they to carry around? Well, this is the smallest tracker I've ever seen. Uh, so it's really small and portable. But the other thing that I like about what Move, Shoot, Move have done with this is they've made the accessories quite small and compact as well. So you have uh, this little phone holder I showed you before. It just fits in your pocket. Um, you've got the, the actual wedge is smaller than the previous model. So they've done some improvements on this wedge. Now this is a pretty big change. On my right hand here, I have the original move, shoot, move wedge. And I've also got the little um, rotating base on the bottom of that. So that's the one that I did a bit of modification to because you might remember it was just a little bit loose and sloppy in the, in the adjustment. So I had to pull it apart and do a bit of work. Now, this is the new one that I just received with the uh, Astro Photography Kit. And you can see, if you look at the two of them, it's a real lot smaller. Let's just get a bit closer to the camera here. So the new one here is much smaller uh, than the older one. And it's a heap lighter as well. So it just seems like they've taken a lot of suggestions, not just from me, but from a lot of other people on board and done something about it. Now, a lot of people wouldn't do that. It would cost them too much money or there'd be too many problems, but no, they've done it. And I think this little wedge, it's a lot lighter and lower profile. So once again, it's lower down 
and I, I just like that. Smaller, lighter, easier to carry around. With this Alan Wallace V-mount, now they do the Z-mount as well, but this is the V-mount. The first thing that they identified quite a while ago was that the, the lever to do this thing up, and here's one of the older ones, it's a fairly short lever and it's hard to get a lot of real grip into that to do it up nice and tight because this needs to be very tight so that it doesn't sag when it gets some weight on it. So some people were finding that they just couldn't do it up tight enough. And so what they did, they extended and made that longer. So you can see here, this lever now is twice as long and it's so much easier to get a lot of brute force onto that and do it up very, very tightly. And so consequently, you don't have any sag when you put a bit of weight on here. But you know, for me, weight is the key to all of this. This kit, in my opinion, is not made for big, heavy camera and lens setups. It's just not. It's made for smaller, lighter, wide field uh, astro landscape photography, which is exactly what I do, and that's why I like it so much. Uh, so that longer lever was great. Now, the, the other thing that they've taken into account, and this is something that I mentioned in my previous video, they've added a rotating base underneath. Now, it's very thin. You can hardly even see it there, but it is sitting there underneath the wedge. And so now I can just get outside, plonk my tripod down on the ground and work out, okay, where is south? Oh, it's down that way. I just whip it around there and suddenly I'm, I'm there ready to go. Now, you might think, oh, who cares? You just move your tripod. But once you get your tripod level, you don't wanna be moving it and adjusting legs and doing anything like that. This just makes it easier. And they have come up with this really thin move, shoot, move branded rotating base and it works a treat. It is really, really good. The other thing I did show you was this modified phone mount. This is really, really simple. I do my polar alignment without the tracker on. I just use the base. Now there's all sorts of different methods, all sorts of ways that people do this, but my method is very, very simple. I just uh, put this in like so. It's got an Arca Swiss mount on the bottom there, so it makes it really easy to get that in. Stick it in there like that, and then I put my phone in here. So the way that this works, uh, you can see here the phone actually fits in a sideways orientation, but it makes no difference to the actual polar alignment method. Uh, now I use Sky Safari Plus 7 uh, or 6 Plus, it doesn't matter version 6 or version 7, they both work uh, equally well. And this is where, again, where this rotating base comes in so handy because as you probably know from these uh, bases on the MSM and also Skywatcher and others, uh, they all have a very similar, where they have these fine adjustment knobs on the side here. I've never really liked them. I realize they're fine adjustment, I get that, but I find it much easier just to really gently just move this rotating base around and get that lined up. And of course, then I just lock it down. You just lock down the rotating base, just like that. Now, the other adjustment, of course, is in, in, a, in a vertical plane this way. So we just undo that like we used to before. And it's got this little knob here and it just operates up and down as required to get that centered into the phone app. And then we just lock it down like that. Now, that works brilliantly. The problem, I guess, that some people may find is phone apps can be problematic depending on your surroundings and environment. Uh, I know I've had situations where I've been around large metal uh, buildings and fences and structures, and that can play a little bit of havoc with a phone app, that's the gyro mechanism, the mag magnetometers or whatever they call them inside a phone. I get that. So there are limitations, but that is nothing to do with the mounting. That's all to do with phones. Uh, and so you have to definitely make sure you calibrate your phone, do the big figure eight, swirl around before you get it up mounted here. And then from there, just uh, use the correct apps. Now there's lots of apps you can use. I'm using an Android phone. This, these Sky Safari apps work with Android and iPhone, but there are other iPhone apps which are absolutely brilliant that are not available for Android. Doesn't matter, you can use whatever suits your particular usage case. So anyway, that's how I do that. So then we just take the phone out and then we take this out, just like that. You know, simplicity. When you're out there in the field, simplicity is always the most important factor. Now, I wanna draw your attention to the next modification that Move, Shoot, Move made. Uh, you might remember from the previous video I did, I was a little bit concerned because the actual tracker 
could just slide straight through when you mount it on here and I put a little grub screw in to stop it from doing that but they've actually done it themselves they have changed the base on the tracker itself and they've put a little stopper screw in there so now if I just put that in there it cannot fall through so that's just one little change in their manufacturing that has made this so much more in my mind user friendly I'm not worried now about accidentally dropping the thing off the mount when I'm out there because that can happen you're out there sometimes in the dark it's cold you might even have gloves on these things can really easily happen the other thing that they have included in this kit which is one thing that I have always used anyway is a low profile ball head and you can see it here it's move shoot move branded and the reason I like a low profile ball head is to keep the height from here to here quite low because the higher you go here with your arrangement there's more potential for movement and flex so using a low profile ball head gives you the added advantage of keeping the whole thing a little bit lower now you can certainly not use the v plate and you can get away with just putting a ball head straight onto the the rotator here itself what you do lose if you do that is this beautiful flat plate here or this level surface to begin with now if any of you ever shoot uh, tracked panoramas you will know exactly why you want to have a flat base which is the reason Alan Wallace God rest his soul uh, invented this in the first place to get that level uh, base now as your tracker moves you, you're going around and it becomes off axis like that that's how trackers work but after a while you can just undo the bottom here do it up tight and it's nice and level again and you can start with that level so when you're doing a pano you're swinging around it's really easy to keep that base level and just do your adjustments with your camera on the ball head on top so that's how I do it the other thing I have on my camera is the silence corner atoll bracket and you can move it around like so so once I put this on I'll do it now and show you slide that into the ball head at the top there like that now I can go from uh, landscape orientation quickly into uh, portrait orientation and that is so much easier than using an L bracket I can tell you because I used to use an L bracket all the time and so the other thing is it brings your remote ports here away from any of this mechanism so I can have them in there and just go up and down like so really really handy now the other thing that I love about the ball head is it's it's got the standard swivel this way and it's got the ball which gives you the option to do it like that but it also has a panorama top head and I can go around like this so isn't that great it's just a little tiny low profile ball head but I can move this in all sorts of different directions because of the versatility of the components that they've chosen to include in this package all in all I think this new updated package from move shoot movies is, is, is amazing and I've been out using it I've shot some great images with this little tracker uh, and sometimes in not ideal circumstances it's been a little bit gusty wind and uh, varying uh, elements against me uh, but I've had no trouble with it and I haven't had to do a thing <laughs> as far as modifications are concerned with any of this so look I would highly recommend I'll show you some images from uh, recently when I've been testing this unit with all these new modifications and I think you'll agree with me uh, it does a pretty good job
So there you have my thoughts on the Move Shoot Move Nomad with these small incremental changes and modifications that they've done over the course of the last 12 months or so. And I think that has made this so much more practical and usable, especially for those of us down here in the Southern Hemisphere. But I have to say that all of these modifications are perfectly suitable for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere who want to use a phone mount to polar align your tracker. All right, well anyway, thank you so much for watching again today. Really appreciate that and look forward to reading your comments down below and I'll see you in the next video real soon.